Good morning guys, how you doing? This is Orlando Backyard Gardening and today I'm going to be doing a little grafting. I'm a little bit excited because I finally uh, got hold of some sounds of a, a mango that I discovered last year that I was introduced to and the, the variety is called Balliot. So here you go, I have five sirens. I had them soaking overnight. Um, I'm gonna try to get maybe two on rootstocks and the other ones I'll put them on existing trees that I have. And uh, you know, hopefully I can get the uh, Balliot to uh, take here in Orlando. This variety is from my homestead area. Um, it came from my friend. Uh, Tom over at Sleepy Lizards Avocado Farm, but he does uh, sell mango scions as well as other fruits and other scions. You can go visit his website at guacfarm.com if you want to check it out. But hopefully I am able to introduce this variety here to Orlando and hopefully I have uh, success today. So let me check out this little thin scion. And it seems, seems like that's a pretty good match right there. So I'm gonna try to put this one on this rootstock here. All right, so I snipped the top part off and I'm gonna try to keep some of these leaves on just to help energize the grafting process. Um, there's actually another, this is actually, uh, it actually shot out two seedlings from the pit. So it's a poly embryonic seedling. Uh, I'm gonna just probably leave this other one off for now. I don't know. I might just cut it off. But uh, yeah, so as we said, this is gonna make a pretty good match right here. And uh, let me go cutting. So guys, you always wanna make sure to uh, snip off this tip, the callus part, and get a fresh and off your scions, okay? So we're gonna snip that tip off like so. And then I'm gonna go at it with a knife and get a, I did about an inch slice here only because this is a smaller diameter rootstock. So I don't wanna cut too far down. I just did it about an inch and I'll do a, a inch angle cut over here. Let's see, give me a second here. Right guys, so I have cut, I have cut the wedge right there. And there's your split on the rootstock. So it just fits right in. Okay, if you look at it, it's a nice, nice fit. You know, once I get it all, Accommodate it and get it tucked in nicely. I'm gonna wrap it up. Okay, guys, so there you go. Nice and snug. I'm gonna wrap it up. Once you wrap it up, you know you're not gonna see any air gaps, you're not gonna see any light penetration. I'm gonna wrap it up. I might put a zip tie on there just, uh, just to make sure that's a little snug and. Uh, this one will be good to go. I like to fold my buddy tape. This is gonna give it extra strength since I don't need it so wide, but on the bottom part, this gives it more strength so I can pull on it more than if it was just a single layer. So it's a double layer. I can really pull on it a lot more and get a little more tightness out of it. So I just go along the graph. Now I did make a mistake and I just realized that I didn't uh, wrap my scion beforehand. Yeah, I do that every once in a while. It's old age setting in, but uh, you can do it after the fact. It, 
it's just a little more uncomfortable to do it that way uh, but yeah it's always best to uh, put the body tape on your scion ahead of time little piece of sign here I'll just uh, finish wrapping the top of it off and then once I'm finished I'm gonna put this into the uh, greenhouse I have fans blowing in the greenhouse so, so it doesn't get overly hot and uh, I will usually wet the saw before I leave it there because in the greenhouse it tends to dry in fact I actually have a lot of my uh, grafted plants sitting in a pot where I can fill it and water from underneath because it's like a daily watering uh, once you put it in the greenhouse it, there's a lot of evaporation that takes place so there you go guys she's wrapped up I'm gonna put a little zip tie here, give me a second. So I got these little zip ties, no matter what color, I got white, I got black, but they're the tiny ones. And uh, one thing about the zip ties, I should caution that as the graph takes, as it starts to callus, this little section does begin to swell and you wanna make sure not to keep the zip ties on too long because they can restrict the flows of you know the nutrients and uh, you know whatever whatever uh, you know hormones or you know whatever whatever goes flows you know through the uh, cambium. You want to make sure that it's not overly tight so i just pull it to snug it just to keep it snug i don't really use a lot of force but when this starts to push and you start getting the callus here um, i will usually take that off i don't keep them on too long because i have noticed that some of the graphs that I have done, uh, once they start to push for a little bit, um, they kind of fizzle out. And then I've noticed that there's constriction here, a little constriction. So I, I've been taking these off fairly quick, you know, right after the uh, joint. Um, and I, I've seen, uh, I have no issues then. So I just caution when you use the zip tapes, you have to get the zip ties you have to be on top of that okay um there's other options that you can use there's bands uh grafting bands that they'll just deteriorate um you can also use the buddy tape and make a kind of a twine out of it Let me, this is the last of my older rolls so i'm just gonna show you how how it's done you take your buddy tape you fold it you pull it and as you pull, as you pull it there you go see this makes a nice uh, kind of like a nylon tape you would just take this and wrap it around your graft area and this you can pull it pretty tight and it's not gonna break so this is what I call buddy twine now I like I used to use it I used it for a while the only thing with this is that when it comes to removing sometimes it's a, just a little more difficult to uh, to remove because this is this is like a rope it actually becomes like a rope and uh, you know I so I started just using the zip ties but this is a good option as well this is a good option if you you take you know the little extra time to remove it it's not really a big deal but yeah, those are the three things. I used to use by the bands at one time, but the bands would just um, deteriorate too fast. That's, that's, that was my experience with them. But yeah, I do the zip ties now, or I'll do the buddy twine if I don't have zip ties on me. Uh, I do this.
Okay, guys, so she is set. Um, I tipped the other one over here. I'm gonna actually tip it a little lower. The other one that's growing with it. One thing you don't wanna forget <laughs> before I put it in the greenhouse, you wanna make sure to label it. So I just put a little uh, label right on my tr on the leaf and I'll just mark the value on here or you can put your own little tape or writing somewhere but yeah I just put it straight on the leaf I just write it down that it all right let me get this in the greenhouse so I have a few grabs going on here in the greenhouse we got some there I got some more here and these are the the pans that I said I will keep a little water in there I usually come in the morning time and throw some water down under the pans uh, just to make sure that they're not drying out on me but for now we're gonna put this one here and here they get a nice little bit of uh, sunlight this one that I got popping that's my orange sherbet that's coming out there here's another one that's pushing Slowly but surely, there's another one. They start to push. Anyway, guys, let me go and uh, see what I'm gonna do. Here's another one. I'm gonna see what we're gonna do with the other ones. There's another one. Yeah, they seem to like the little greenhouse. As long as you keep it ventilated, it's my fan. It doesn't get too hot in here. And so they love it. All right, guys, let me go do my other grafting. So guys, check this out. Now this rootstock here is actually not separate. It's actually two branches coming out of the one stem. This was uh, one that I tried to graft before. It didn't work, so it threw out a new shoot over here. And the only reason that this one didn't reflush is because there's no uh, flushing points on this one. So what this one has been doing is it has been storing energy in there. And so I think that I'm gonna graft onto this one. I'm gonna tip this other portion over here to keep it energized. Um, but since they are one, I'm gonna graft onto this branch. And uh, hoping that there's a lot of energy stored in there and it's gonna push this graph which I have this uh, sign I'm sorry this sign here I'm gonna put it a little lower but it's a long sign so it's gonna have a, a good height and uh, let's go for it all right so you know this is usually not the ideal you know usually you'll use a uh, rootstock that just has one stalk uh, but you know I like to give all my rootstocks a chance uh, this one, I tried to graft onto it before. It didn't take it, so I'm gonna let it, uh, give it a chance for it to redeem itself. Uh, let me top off this one first. We kept some of the leaves on there. Let me take this leaf. It has a little bit of a track notes on it. Uh, all right. So like I said, this is the one that I'm gonna use. Tip off that. I think I'm gonna have to let's see how thick this is. Okay, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, it's gonna be a good height. It's gonna be a good height from here. It's gonna be a good height once it starts to flush out. All right, let's get ready. Let me get my blades and we'll start cutting. All right, so always remember to cut that tip, that callus tip when you have scions. Uh, you want to always start with a fresh tip, so snip that off. All right, we're going to double check the fit again. Make sure that the thickness are pretty much aligned. I'm just going to cut it a little lower. Get it to a fatter section, and it looks perfect. All right. So another thing you want to take into consideration when you put these these uh, signs on is like what direction is the sign facing, you know? So if I leave it this way, it's going to grow and face outward. So I will usually try to make that cut so it curves back in, okay? 
instead of having it curve outwards, I would rather have the sign on uh, when it starts to flush to kind of curve back in so it could straighten itself out as it grows out. Uh, now this one has leaves on it. We no longer need those leaves. So we're gonna wanna make sure to uh, snip them off, okay? So we can get rid of that. Snip, snip. Now this, these signs, the ones that I got, they're not really pushing. You know, you're not seeing active buds pushing, but um, that's not really important. What's important is that you get that union to take. Once that union takes, you know, your sign can stay green for, for months and it'll push when, it, when it's ready, when it decides to push. As long as it stays green and you have that union already done, then you're good. Now, a lot of people like to see them pushing because you get a faster, uh, what you think is a faster take, but usually what's happening is that the push, the little buds are actually using energy in the scion itself until it uh, actually makes that, that uh, union. So it seems like it's working faster and people like to see the faster, you know, results. But it's also better to have a scion that is actively pushing and your rootstock actively pushing as well. That's when you're gonna get better results. So this is not the best, the best scenario. You know, my rootstock, uh, it was pushing. It was pushing, but my uh, scion is really not pushing. But you know, as long as you do that union and, and you make sure that you do a nice little wedge and everything fits snug, you should be good to go. So let me cut this little angle and slice down that uh, root stock and we should be good to go. And again, because this is not a thick um, root stock, I'm just gonna do it maybe about an inch an uh, inch and a half at most. I don't want to go too far down because it becomes, once you slice it, it it's very fragile. And uh, I like to just keep it at an inch and an inch and a half slice. Let me go down a little bit more. Uh, there we go. Let me wedge this guy up. Remember that I said I was going to do it to the inside, so I already messed that up because I didn't slice it the way I wanted to slice it, so we're going to have to do, uh, okay, I'm going to have to do it a little bit different, but I'm still going to aim to have the curve in a good, in a good direction. All right, so let me get this angle, beautiful. It's always a little harder with these thinner scions and you have to be a little bit more careful when you do your slicing because you could easily take off a big chunk of your scion and before you know it all you're gonna have left is a little tiny little stub <laughs> so you want to make sure to be careful so there's my wedge my wedge right there guys see it and let me check it here see if it's a nice fit and it looks like it's a beautiful fit and it looks like a beautiful fit very snug okay all right once i get that tape on and uh this the straps on she's gonna be a snug fit so check that out this is the you guys can see it well but yep there she is all right go ahead and put the wrap on there you put your little zip ties she can be very snug very snug okay guys so i don't want to do the same mistake that i did last time i'm going to wrap the scion in the body tape first all right 
you would think that after I've done this for as many times as I have, that I will remember this, right? Now, a lot of times when you order Styons, you know, a lot of times, you know, well, sometimes, I'm not gonna say a lot of times, but there are some people who do uh, buddy tape them for you. Uh, so you'll get them buddy taped. Uh, you know, it's uh, as long as they're, the Styons are kept moist, you know and they're shipped to you you know <clears throat> in some kind of moist medium it should be fine body tape is not really necessary and you know i just think that if they don't come with the body tape then that gives you the opportunity now on the top i like to make sure i like to make sure that i cover that top and pull it as much as i can without it breaking because i like to have it as thin as I can, um, just forming a little cover. Okay, there you go. She's set. So we'll finish off. So, like I was saying, you know, as long as you know you receive your sounds in a moist medium and they haven't dried out, then you should be fine. The body tape, you know, having them ship in the body tape is nice, you know. Uh, you know, some people, I guess if you don't have body tape, but you should have body tape if you're doing grafting. If you're really serious about grafting, then I always recommend you use the body tape. Now there are other, there are other products out there. You know, people, there's people that do with Saran Wrap. Um, and then there's people that like to use the parafilm. Now parafilm is not the same as body tape. Um, it's it's a waxy tape it is it is it's good it's you know um, but I don't find that it, it is as flexible as the buddy tape um, it will break uh, if you pull it a little too hard buddy tape I find that the buddy tape you can kind of put it a little harder it has uh, you know more resistance to the pulling and it just seems to be more uh, flexible and it holds up to the sun a lot better than the parafilm the parafilm i used to use it and after you know a while it would crack it would get brittle from the sun and i'm talking about after like a couple of weeks it would be brittle so once it got brittle and, and cracked like that water would get into that uh that union you know so I uh, use the buddy tape. It's a little more expensive, a little bit more expensive, but you know, you, what you can do as well is that you can use a combination of the two, you know? Uh, you can use the parafilm, you can use uh, like a little layer of the buddy tape on your graph point. Uh, and then, you know, just to reinforce it, you can reinforce it with the parafilm if you wanna do that, if you're trying to save a little bit of money. Um, but yeah, the, the buddy tape is your best option, in my opinion. But like I said, there's people that do it other ways. They use saran tape and they're fine with it. You know, if you're fine, if you're using something else and you're fine with that and it's working for you, then yeah, more power to you. But from my experience, especially when I graph things on my trees that are, you know, more exposed to the elements, yeah, the buddy, the parafilm, sorry didn't last as long all right guys so here you go she's all done uh, this is the second one like I said I'm gonna leave it on because it's 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 getting energy it's actually you know it's the same like I said this is all connected to the same rootstock so as this one pulls pushes out when it starts to push I'll probably cut this one back at the base or you know somewhere down here low at the base I'll push it back I'll make sure that uh, I callous that that cut. Um, I might just leave it a little high. We'll see. But uh, you know, hopefully this one takes in the greenhouse. And always remember, like I said, guys, label, label, because I will forget. You see all of those uh, graphs that I have in the greenhouse. I will forget which one this was. You know. Um, you know, you reach a certain age, the mind doesn't work as well. 
So guys, there you go. I think it's beautiful. You know, it's uh, you know, it's gonna start flushing from here, and and you know, the uh, root stock that I'm using looks a little bit dwarfish. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it works. Now, my understanding is this valley. It's like a medium vigorous uh, growing tree. So. Well, that's my second root stock, guys. This one, I'll put it in the greenhouse. Let me actually show you guys the uh, how uh, to do the the uh, buddy twine on this one. I'm not gonna use a zip tie. I'm gonna do it for you guys using the buddy twine. Okay. So there you go. Like I said, you pull it. So let's get to the bottom. Now it's gonna be a little hard because of this other this other branch one I'm pushing the side, okay? So you take it and you pretty much I'm sorry, let me let me get this tilted a little bit lower so you guys can see. Alright, so you're gonna pull it. And as you pull it, you can see you just pull it, it doesn't break doesn't break and it's wrapping around the graph point and you can wrap it a few times but what I think I'm gonna do you know some people tie knot but I'm not gonna tie knot I'm gonna try to leave a little bit hanging out here so that when I have to take it off I'll know where it is all right guys so you see that you guys can tell it's wrapped with the buddy twine and that stuff is pretty tight it's pretty tight so you know if you don't have zip ties you can use your buddy tape all right so that's called the buddy twine method all right guys so she's ready she's labeled and this is my second rootstock graft and i'm gonna go ahead and the rest of them i'll do them on trees i won't be able to videotape that one but i'll show you them after i have them done I'll show you the graphs in place, all right? So guys, so the reason that I'm excited about this uh, ballad mango is because um, when I was introduced to it uh, last, um, last year, last season, um, I went to the the Father's Day mango taste that is usually done over at Tropical Acres. And my friend from Sleepy Tom, from Sleepy uh, Lizard Avocado Farm, brought me a mango course. And I told him I wanted to taste it. And he knew I was going, so he had a mango for me. And so it was a nice sized mango. You know, it was a nice, decent sized mango. And uh, when I tried it, when I took it home, you know, I let it sit for a day. I think it was a day or two. I let it sit, and when I when I tried it, I mean, it had a nice taste to it. You know, it, it was a fruity. You know, it was, it was a fruity. It, it it was unique. You know, it's, it wasn't like a traditional mango. It was like fruity. Um, you know, citrus tones, peach. You know, it had all kinds of you know fruitiness to it but what was unique about it was the texture now this mango is unlike any other mango the texture wise that i have tried it's got no fiber but the texture was kind of like a melon you know like a watermelon kind of texture and you know when you bite it all that juice would drip just like a watermelon and i found that fascinating you know because this this was different from like your regular mangoes you know and so, you know, that's why I hope that I can get it a taste because of its uniqueness, you know, and uh, it, it had a good flavor, to, you know. Now, I don't know too much about its production, how it produces, you know, I know from what I've seen, it's like a medium bigger tree. Uh, so, you know, I don't know about its disease resistance. I'm going to have to, you know, uh, talk to Tom and... Um, Get a little more details on the tree but um my other uh graphs i'm gonna put them on my phoenix 
and my fair child trees, which are my older, more established trees, and more on the bigger side. Uh, so I'm gonna give those a shot. And uh, like I said, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm able to get them going and introduce this Ferrari over to Orlando. I really do hope that at least one of them takes, you know. Uh, the more the better, but I'm hoping that at least one takes. You know? All right, guys, so my final graft is on. Uh, I put another graft on my Phoenix tree. So I have two of the Balliot grafts on the Phoenix. This is the last graft that I put. It's on my Fairchild tree. It's uh, a little protected in the canopy, so it's not going to get full sun. Uh, this tree is holding a lot of fruit right now. If you guys can see, it's holding fruit. So it's not really a pushing mode. Uh, so it's going to take a little longer for this uh, sign to push. But the most important thing is that the union takes. I have another few graphs here. This is a Phoenix graph. I actually just uncovered it yesterday. It's pushing already. This is my Edward, uh, Edward graph. It's not pushing it, but the unions have taken. So that's why I have removed the uh, uh, buddy tape. I'm gonna actually wrap it up again. I had just took it off just to check the tip, but I'm gonna wrap them up again. And then up here, which I can't really show you because it's in the sun, but there's another one here. This is an orange, orange sherbet. Uh, graph that I did and it's actually pushing up on the tip so there's three four graphs that I have on this fair child right now and uh, like I said she's holding a lot of fruit that's some coke this is a cotton candy graph that I did on here and it's holding fruit and uh, like I said there's a lot of fruits fair child's holding a lot of fruits a lot of them are dropping right now but it's still holding a good amount and there's a little bit of a push up there. There's a little bit of push around the tree, but not a lot. So it's full of energy. It's got a lot of energy and hopefully that one will take. And guys, I think that's it. I am done. Uh, like I said, if you guys are interested in the Balliot mango and you want to graft some of it, uh, I left the, uh, the link down in the description is guacfarm.com in case you guys forget uh it's a good mango and i do recommend it's a nice size meaty mango with a nice unique texture it's kind of like a watermelon it's got a citrus peachy fruity taste to it uh, guys this is it this is the end of my video and i hope you guys enjoyed as always if you like the uh, videos if you found the content uh helpful Please like and subscribe, all right? This is Orlando Backyard Gardening, signing off for you guys.